All right, we're going to take a look at the Lagrange multipliers method for finding optimization values for a function of several variables subject to constraints. In this example, we've got a function of three variables, f is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And we've got two constraints, 2x plus y plus 2z equals 9, and 5x plus 5y plus 7z equals 29. All right, so the first step is to find partial derivatives of the objective function. That's the function you're trying to find minimum or maximum values of. Um, so this is our objective function, f. Uh, and since it's a function of three variables, we have three partial derivatives. Um, but uh, obviously, the number of variables determines the number of partial derivatives there. Uh, partial with respect to x is just 2x. Partial y is 2y. Partial z is 2z. That seems easy after doing all those other partial derivatives and the other methodologies. Um, then we take our constraint equations and we set them equal to zero. Um, so you don't always have to do this, uh, but you can see that we've got 9 and 29 as constants there. And so to kind of prep these, we're going to subtract those constants, and that will define g as 2x plus y plus 2z minus 9, and h 5x plus 5y plus 7z minus 29. Uh, and so the reason why I do that is it might affect the result in step three, where we find the partial derivatives of g and h with respect to all the variables there. So we'll get partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z for both g and h. And you can see that 9 and 29 don't make a difference here, but um, in general, that could happen. All right, so partial derivatives of g with respect to x, y, and z. Partial g, partial x, we get a 2. Partial g, partial y, we get a 1. Partial g, partial z, we get a 2. All right, uh, same thing, but with h, partial h, partial x is 5. Partial h, partial y is 5. Partial h, partial z is 7. All right, now we're set up, ready to set up the Lagrange equations, which relate the gradient of f to the gradients of g and h. Um, and we will kind of write these out as a system of equations and then show how it is, in fact, um, just setting the components of the uh, vectors equal to each other. So um, with the first one, we have our with the left sides, we have the partial derivatives of f. So 2x, 2y, 2z, right? And so, I mean, this is the gradient of f. Right? And then on the right side, we put in the partial derivatives of g and h, um, but they get multiplied by a constant, usually use the Greek letter lambda. Um, and if we have two constraints, then we'll need a lambda one and a lambda two. So lambda one will go with g, lambda two will go with h. If you just have one constraint, you only need one lambda. Um, all right, so lambda times partial g partial x is two, and oh, that's lambda one. And then lambda two times partial h, partial x, just five. Uh, all right, same thing for the y's. So lambda one times one, lambda two times five, Lambda one times two and lambda two times seven. 
And so you can see this is lambda one times the gradient of G plus lambda two times the gradient H, right? And so that is in fact what we've set up. Now here it's a linear system of equations, um, but it very well could be nonlinear. These partial derivatives could have nonlinear functions. Um, and I think I wanna put these constants in front. And then the goal is to um, combine this system of equations. Because okay. we don't really need these anymore. Uh, with the constraint equations themselves. And that will be our system to solve. So we already have those constraint equations here. We don't really need we don't need G and H. And so there's five equations here, and there are five unknowns, right? X, Y, Z, that's three, and then there's two lambdas. So five equations, five unknowns. And we would just solve this system um, for the unknowns. We're mainly interested in the X, Y, Z values. Um, lambda one and lambda two themselves are just means to an end here. Um, though it seems like a lot of times you find lambda one and lambda two first. Um, and that's going to be what happens here. Uh, so let's uh, solve this system for x, y, and z. So what I suggest that we do here is we divide all these by two. And that'll let you solve for x, y, and z. So x would be lambda one plus five halves lambda two. Y would be one half lambda one plus five halves two. And Z would be lambda one plus seven halves two. Then we substitute those into the constraint equations. So that X would go right here, right there. Z go there, there, and then Y go there. And you're going to want to substitute those in parentheses. Um, and then these will be pretty long when you do that. Um, it'll look something like this. So two times X. That's 2x plus y. We don't need parentheses there. Plus 2z.
minus nine equals zero. And then you can distribute the two. Get two lambda one plus five lambda two. Two lambda one plus seven lambda two. And then if you simplify, there's a lot of like terms. So lambda one, lambda one, lambda one, uh, two plus two is four plus a half is nine halves. And then lambda two, lambda two, lambda two, five plus seven is 12, uh, which is 24 halves plus five is 29 halves. So it turns into that. I just do the same thing with the second equation. So 5x, 5 times lambda 1 plus 5 halves, lambda 2, plus 5y, five, 5 times 1 half lambda 1 plus 5 halves, lambda 2, plus 7z, seven, 7 times lambda 1 plus 7 halves, 2 minus 29, 0. All right, distributing the fives and the seven, five lambda one plus 25 over two lambda two plus five halves lambda one plus 25 over two lambda two plus seven lambda one plus 49 over two lambda two. And I guess we're gonna put that 29 over there. All right, so lambda ones, we've got five and seven is 12, uh, which is 24 halves plus five is 29 halves. So we get the 29 halves with the lambda one this time. And then lambda twos, I've got 25 over two with 25 over two, which is 25. Uh, and then 49 over two, 25 is 50 over two. And so that gives you 99 over two. Um, multiplying everything by two to get rid of the fractions. You get 29 lambda one plus 99 lambda two equals 58. Uh, multiplying this one by two as well. So we did a times two. Yeah. And we get nine lambda one plus 29 lambda two equals 18. And we reduced it all to a two by two system. At that point, we need to use substitution, addition, elimination, that kind of thing. Um, it looks like substitution is probably um, best here. So if we solve the top equation for lambda one, you would get dividing everything by nine, um, we get negative 29 over nine lambda two plus two, right? 18 divided by nine is two. And then that would go in this other one right here. And so you get, see, 29 times negative 29 divided by 9. That's negative 841 over 9 plus 99 is 50 over 9. Uh, and then multiply by 9 over 50.
Let's just seeing this doesn't match up with what I have. All right, sorry, I found my mistake. I made a mistake here when we substituted in lambda one. We didn't put the plus two. Um, so let's fix that. Two. So then you need to distribute that um, with the negative 29 over 9 times 29. You do get negative 841 over 9. And then the 29 times 2 is 58. Subtracting 58 from both sides. Um, and you'll see that you get 0 over here. Um, and so lambda 2 will have to be 0. Whatever you get when you combine those lambda 2 terms, you'll divide and you get lambda 2 is 0. Um, putting that up here, see lambda 1 is 2. So we found the values of lambda 1 and lambda 2. We can now take those and put them in here to find the values of x, y, and z. It's actually pretty easy, right? If lambda 2 is 0, then all that stuff's gone. And if lambda 1 is 2, then you get x equals 2, y equals 1, z equals 2. So the last part of that's pretty quick, but certainly have to be. All right, so we found this point 212. And those are the x, y, and z values. Um, and you can get more than one solution to this system, right? So in step six, we find out what the value of the function is there. Remember, it's a function of three variables, um, x, y, and z. And so we usually, when we have that, we have w is the output value. So let's put this all back in to the function itself. Um, recall that the function was x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if we use 2, 1, 2, we get 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1 plus 4, or 9. 9 is the value of the function there. And so you, you want to do that for each of the solutions. And then you could compare these values. Um, the biggest function value you get should be the maximum. The smallest function value you get should be the minimum. Um, we only have one value. Um, and so, you know, it, it might not be obvious if it's a max or a min, right? And the problem at the beginning said, find the minimum value. So you're, you're probably thinking, oh, well, Professor Watts, it's obviously a min. Uh, what if the problem just said, you know, find the extreme value? Um, and so then you would just need one other point uh, inside the constraints. Uh, I would pick a point kind of nearby, um, or you could go to a graph, right? Um, but picking a point kind of nearby Say pick something like two, um, yeah, I guess, how do we know that it's also in the constraint? So I guess we'd have to go to these constraints. Maybe this is a little harder than I thought. You go to these constraint equations, and then you need to find another point that's there. Um, the domain's not really restricted, but um, so I would probably put in some x and y values, and then use this to get the z value. So. Um, Yeah, 
yeah, that's not obvious at all. <laughs> I guess I need to think about that. Um, let's go on with the process. Let's say can't follow through on that. Um, it says uh, to validate the solution by checking that it satisfies the system found in step five. Um, and then you can graph the objective function if it's a function of two variables. We've got a function of three variables, so we need some sort of four-dimensional graphing, which we do not have. Um, so we'll do the analytic validation um, and we'll put it in the system. So let's grab that system again. And what I do is I would go to the original system, just in case we maybe made a mistake. So get rid of these, or ignore the twos. I don't know if I can safely erase them. And we're basically checking just the algebra we used solving the system. Uh, that seems like the hardest part and the place we'd most likely make a mistake. All right, um, so putting in, oh, we also had lambda one, was two and lambda two was zero. So uh, checking the first equation, two x, right? Ignore these twos. We're gonna use the original version. Two x would be two times two. That should be two times lambda one plus five. Oh, was lambda one equal to one? So I may have found a mistake here. Um, let's see. Or maybe we didn't. No, I don't. <laughs> guess I'm losing it. Uh, four equals four. OK, sorry. So yeah, that checks out. Um, let's check the second equation. Two times y is two times 1 equals lambda 1, which is 1, plus 5 times lambda 2, which is 0. Oh, lambda one is two. Oh my gosh. So this is two equals two. All right, checking the third equation. Maybe I can get this one right. Two times z is two times two. Uh, two times lambda one is two times two. And then seven times zero. So that's four equals four. Okay. And then checking these constraint equations. Um, two times x is two times two plus y is one, plus two times z is two times two minus nine is zero, four plus one plus four minus nine is zero, so that works. And then the last one, five times x plus five times y plus seven times z minus 29, so that's 10 plus five plus 14, and that's uh, 29 minus 29. So, so just checking that x, y, z, lambda 1, lambda 2 all satisfy the system of equations. Um, and then that should be good. All right. That'll do it for Lagrange multipliers. And for chapter 4, looking at functions of several variables onto multiple integration.